Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to discuss a crappy subject, so don't expect too much. I'm also starting a new series on concepts in paleontology, perhaps a primer of things to come. Anyway, let's jump right in. <laughs> A coprolite is fossilized feces, a type of trace fossil. In case you don't know, trace fossils or ichnofossils are indicators of biological activity. Other trace fossils include footprints, burrows, root cavities, egg fragments, and stromatolites. This is one place where the idea, all the fossil tells you is that something died, really falls apart. Footprints don't tell you something died, they tell you something lived. They tell you about an animal's stance, how it walked, how it ran. There are even footprints from invertebrates, such as the Eurypterid Hippertopterus. Other trace fossils of invertebrates include the possible mollusk, Kimberella, where scratch marks indicate how it moved about the ocean floor. We're here today, though, to talk about fossil poo. Now, as an organism, you must get rid of bodily waste, and in some cases, that waste becomes fossilized if it's covered quickly enough. Coprolites are therefore important in our understanding of the diet of ancient animals and people. For instance, the oldest coprolite dates all the way back to the cambrian burgessial type deposits in Nevada and Utah, and contain evidence of predatory and scavenging behavior in certain marine invertebrates. Permian coprolites from Russian carnivorous tetrapods have hair-like structures, indicating that hair existed on pre-mammalian synapsids. 270 million year old shark coprolites house tapeworm eggs, which provides the earliest evidence of parasitism in tapeworms. Huge amounts of coprolite from numerous species and locations have been found dating to the Triassic, and some authors even tried, unsuccessfully I might add, to use coprolite containing freshwater crustaceans called ostracods to demonstrate that India was closer to Eurasia than to Antarctica during the Triassic. Later coprolites from the Cretaceous megatheropod Tyrannosaurus rex have given paleontologists insight into the carnivore's digestive processes as well as its diet. And late Cretaceous Indian titanosaur coprolite shows that at least five taxa of Poacea grasses were present on the subcontinent before it became isolated. In Cenozoic North America, coprolites have been described from crocodilians, champsosaurs, predatory birds, and a host of mammals. Coprolites from the giant ground sloth Notherotheriops have given researchers a glimpse into the climatic conditions of its home, since some contain pollen from wetter climates and others with pollen from drier climates. More coprolites from the same mammal have yielded its nuclear and mitochondrial DNA, as well as chloroplast DNA of plants in its diet. And, using the nuclear DNA, researchers figured out that Notherotheriops is most closely related to the living three-toed sloth. Remember those guys called moas that we met in island biogeography? Well, fossilized vegetation in their coprolites has revealed that they fed primarily on herbs and low shrubs, dispelling the notion that they were tree browsers. Lastly, coprolites have been recovered from humans and are instrumental in archaeological reconstructions of people's lives in ancient cultures. For example, human coprolites from Tamaulipas, Mexico, contained magui fibers, squash seeds, insect fragments, and pieces of snail shells. Also, colon contents from Incan mummies had whipworms, which are parasitic roundworms. They can cause trichuriasis, symptoms of which include abdominal pain, fatigue, and diarrhea. According to the 1974 paper, Prehistoric Diet in Southwest Texas, The Coprolite Evidence, Coprolites have provided huge data on the locality, saying, quote, The data from these 43 coprolite samples are used to 1. Reconstruct aboriginal diet patterns in southwest Texas between 800 BC and AD 500. 2. Predict specific periods of seasonal site occupancy. 3. Distinguish between pollen resulting from the eating of certain plant foods and background pollen resulting from the normal pollen rain. And 4 make limited generalizations concerning the regional paleoenvironment between 800 BC and AD 500." Close quote. 
So, as you can see, coprolite is extremely important in understanding the diet and environment of various organisms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.